All right, guys, I don't know if this is a good idea or not. I bought this float tube two days ago, and I've only seen these things used in lakes and ponds and where the water is like glass. Never seen it used in the ocean, and that's where I'm taking it out to, the Pacific Ocean. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but it's a calm day. It's a little bit more windy than I thought it was going to be, so that could be the only problem. The coefficient is low, so the current should not be strong until about one o'clock. So I sit on this thing like this, and then just paddle with my, my flippers, and then that'll, that'll propel me backwards, and I'll be able to fish. So that is the plan, and fingers crossed, there's no great white sharks out here. It is a possibility, I won't lie. But one thing I want to mention before I go down there, is you probably shouldn't try this by yourself. Unless you know what you're doing, unless you know the water and you know the tides and stuff. But I had one video in the past where I went out on a raft with my friend Daniel, who's here with me today. We went out in San Francisco. The current was just so fast. It was pushing us. We could have went a mile in no time. Maybe we should go out farther, dude. Dude, we're drifting hella. Like a lot. But we had an anchor and an inflatable raft, almost punctured the raft. We were going for crabs. All right, bring it over, bring it over the edge. Oh, dude, I don't have a measuring tape. No way, Mats. This year, I saw some guys go out on Baker Beach in their raft, and I think they were inspired by my video. And two minutes into trying to get out, they flipped the raft, dropped all their crab pots. I think they had a motor on it too. So just know what you're doing before you get into a situation like this. So I'm gonna hike down there, get all suited up, get my bait ready, and try to catch some fish on this float tube in the Pacific Ocean. And hopefully my legs don't get bitten off. Oh man, got a lot of gear. Fins, wetsuit, float tube, backpack, camera gear, fishing pole, all the types of stuff. Almost there, almost there. All right guys, it is a lot more rough than I was expecting, but I'm still gonna go out. So I've got my seven millimeter bottoms and I've got this three millimeter top under here. And I've also got a life vest. So I'm taking all the safety precautions that I can take other than the conditions. So before I get out there, I might get seasick because I get seasick really easily. So let me show you what I'm using first. An eight foot power stick by Offshore Angler. I love this rod. I've got a four and a half inch Kitek right here, swim bait, three quarter ounce weight. And I've also got a three and a half inch Kitek as a trailer right above it. On the bottom, th four and a half inch, three and a half on top. I'm gonna give this one shot. If it works, then I'll stay out there. If I don't get snagged, I'll stay out there. If it doesn't, I'll come back on shore and go out and fish where Daniel's at. All right, here goes nothing. All right, guys, we're at the launch area. It's the most calm here. You, I know for sure you can't see, but Daniel's all the way on that rock right there. Only thing is I gotta get out past these breakers. All right, there's the float tube. Got my flippers right there. I don't know about this, but we're gonna give it a shot. All right, guys, wish me luck. Let's see, can we do it now? Oh, no! Oh, it's hard to steer with this thing. Okay, getting swept out a little bit now. Okay, I'm on my side. Oh, Jesus. This is harder than I thought. I don't know how the hell am I going to steer with this thing. All right, this is probably a bad idea. Oh, sh Oh, I don't want to be facing this way. I want to be facing... No, 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 no. Oh, crap. All right, yeah, this is a bad idea. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to be getting near shore. Dang it. I don't think this is going to work, guys. I don't think this is going to work. Oh, man. Yeah, there's just too much current. Ah, oh, damn it. All right, let me try one more time. All right, here we go. That was kind of scary. There's just no control out there. If I had a paddle, this might work. There's just no way. This water is just pushing me. There's just no way this is going to work. I have no control over where I want to go. Yeah, geez, ah, like, I don't want to be facing forward like this. Like, I want to be turned around, but I can't. 
See, when I try to paddle, I get pushed back in towards shore. Shoot, it's not what I want to do. This ain't gonna work. I need, I want to get out to that rock over there, but I'm just getting pushed right back. Then I'm gonna have to call this quits and meet Daniel up on that rock. All right, guys, I'm gonna give it one more shot, last shot, and then I'll go meet up Daniel on that rock. Damn it, disappointed. If I had a paddle though, I swear this would work. All right, here we go. Okay, hey guys, I'm making it. I'm making it. I'm going out. I'm going out. I'm going out. Oh, dude, I made it. I made it. I made it past the breakers. Holy crap. I'm out in the water now. Oh, shoot. All right, now what the hell is going to happen? I was paddle out a little bit farther. Okay, there's some kelp right next to me. Oh, dude, we made it. We made it. Oh, my God. We're out here. We're out here. Oh, my God. Okay. All right, this is kind of crazy. Guys, I made it out on this flow tube. I'm freaking out here right now. I made it out past the breakers. I don't know how long I can stay out here. I don't know how I'm even going to get back. I Hopefully, I don't get pulled out too far. Looks like I'm not moving too much. I swear, if I had a paddle, though, this would be freaking easy. This would be easy if I had a paddle. Man, this is kind of nice. My, look at my legs. They're not even in the water. I'm nice and warm. Got my flippers. The only problem is I can't turn around. But, all right, let's, uh, let's try to fish a little bit. Try to get one. Look, the cool thing about this flow tube is it's got these pockets here. And I can hold my tackle box. All right, I'm kind of in a rush because I don't want to get pushed back to shore so fast. All right, all right, guys. Here we go, first cast. Oh no, first cast, I got snagged. Oh my God. First cast, I got snagged. No, no. Okay, well, actually, this snag can pull me out farther, so that could be a good thing if I want to get out a little bit farther. God dang it. First cast snag, really? This is kind of crazy that I'm out here on a float tube. What the hell, dude? Dude, there are sharks down here, too. For real. Okay, here we go. There, I like this angle. Please come off. Please, please, please come off. God dang it, it's not coming off. Ah, ah broke it off. Damn it. Ah. All right, well, all right, I'll just have to retie out here. Hopefully I don't get too seasick. All right, let's try to do this real quick. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see the shore behind me, but it is pretty far. I feel comfortable out here though. I got those first jitters out of my system. Now, if I want to paddle and turn around, so the only way that I can go propel myself backwards is to use my fins and kick. But if I want to go this way, I'll have to use my hands and turn myself around and then kick. So eventually I'm going to go meet up Daniel on that rock behind me. But you know, right now I'm in this area where you cannot cast to at shore. You cannot cast to from that rock. So I'm hoping all of this is, has not been fished. And the good thing about the current right now is it just keeps pushing me back to shore. So I'm not getting sucked out to sea. And uh, yeah, so going to continue on, hopefully land a fish on the float tube. For first, oh, one thing that I wanted to mention too, is that if you, first, whatever reason on earth, I don't know why you would want to do it. If you want to get a float tube and go in the ocean for rockfish or something, it has the same rules, I'm pretty sure, as offshore angling. And rockfish season closes from a boat or kayak or float tube from the end of December. So December 31st is the end of rockfish season. So I've got a couple more weeks to do this again if I want to. But yeah, just a tip, make sure you don't come out here doing this, you know, in February or March when the season is closed. You can fish from shore all year round from rockfish, but just not from a boat out here. I didn't take any seasickness medication either. Feeling good. Um, let's get that bait back in the water right now. Let's see, I don't know if you can see the paddle, my, uh, my fins, that's how you control it. You just paddle your way out. I'm trying to get a little bit farther this time. Now that I feel a little bit more safe and I know which way the current is pushing me, I actually made it out on the float tube. This is crazy. I'm hella far from shore. I'm like, like at least a hundred yards offshore right now. It's hella deep out there too. Really gotta let it sit for like a good like 10 seconds almost. 
pretty comfortable out here on this float tube though oh there's a fish oh my god i had a fish oh i should just let him take it a little bit more it didn't feel that big honestly but it was a fish for sure i don't know if you guys saw that bite but definitely a fish down there oh there he is here he is oh my god i got him again i had him i wonder what it is probably a black rock fish maybe do you see that two bites all right getting too close to shore let's paddle out some more I'm going to get one today on the float tube. I can pretty much guarantee it. Oh, I don't want to jinx myself. Knock on wood, but there's no wood around me. All right, let's see what happens on this cast. Oh, there's a fish. Got one. Got one. There's a fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, this is a fighter. Oh, that's a big ling right there, I think. Oh, my goodness. Oh, come on, baby. Don't lose me. Don't lose him. What are you? Got one. Oh, what the heck is this? This is a big one though. Oh, it's a big fish. Let's see what the heck is this? Oh, that's a link cod right there on the lip, and that's a keeper too. Woo! -hoo! Link cod. That's a big fish right there. Alright, let's bring him in here. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. On the float tube. Let's go. Alright, come on. See when you get these link cod, you don't grab them by the teeth. That's for sure, because the teeth. Look at that. Lingcod on the float tube. Let's go, man. That's a keeper for sure, too. That's 22 inches. He's got to be 22. Damn. Lingcod, baby, let's go on the float tube. Whoo! Oh, he's got a full stomach, too. What's he been eating? That's a keeper lingcod, man. So I'm only going to keep one fish. We're going to have this for lunch. Brought some uh, some salsa. You know I've got the avocado. And you know what else I got. I don't even have to say it. So I got that. We're going to fillet this guy up. I'm going to do a little bit more fishing out here. Man, I can fish out here all day. Look at that fish, man. That's a beautiful freaking fish. That is... Man, I don't need, I'm at a loss for words. Hell yeah. All right. Hell yeah. All right, I'm going to bleed him. And then hopefully... No, uh, no sharks come around me. I'm just gonna bleed him right now. Yep, keeper too. Bleeding him out right now. I'm hoping that a shark isn't like, Ooh, what the hell is that? I see a fish and I see some blood. I'm gonna go eat it. And look right behind me, I got this little keeper case thing right here that was so fun i knew that was fish immediately oh man it bit i didn't even set the hook i was just kept reeling it in and then i felt that weight there was that weight on the on the line so then i set the hook like there's a fish there you know and then yeah fought and it pulled drag i got my drag set tight too only a big ling or a big rockfish and there are some big rockfish out here only those things are going to do that uh, so we got so far one link cod, that's a keeper for sure. So, I'm gonna paddle back out, keep this thing right behind me, keep it fresh in the water. It's really important to find bottom. You want that bait to be really close to bottom. Sometimes out here, you don't know how deep the water is, so you just gotta let that bait sink all the way to the bottom. And if you're using light weight, sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it takes 15 seconds to hit bottom. But, you know, don't, don't even reel in unless you hit bottom. That's my motto. We're getting a little bit more confident as the day goes on, a little bit more comfortable out here. I'm way out. I was a little nervous at first going out here. I thought I might flip. I didn't know what to expect. I thought I couldn't have any control, but how things have changed. Any idea why you get seasick? Just the equilibrium thing or, or what? What is it? How do you get over it? Is it just time on the water or, or what? Putting those water hours in, getting those sea legs? Trying. Having a hard time though. I'm going to do a couple more casts and then drift a natural drift right back to shore. Let me show you that fish though one more time. Look at that lingcod, man. There's a lot of meat on there. That is a nice fish. That is a nice fish. We're going to have some good, some good fish lunch today. All right. Okay. Look at this thing. Freaking float tube in the ocean. Just take a moment just to look at that. 
Look at that little thing. And that was a blast. That was so fun. And it's so convenient too. Look at look at it. it. It deflates and it's packable. You can put it on your backpack. This thing is pretty cool. I like it a lot. What a beautiful fish right here. Look, matches my t-shirt. Exactly why I designed this t-shirt with that link card. Because that's what we catch here on the west coast. Man, that's nice. That is nice. Before I fillet this fish, before we eat him up, you know, I wasn't going to do this, but I bought this from Amazon like two or three days ago, and it's really, really cool. So if you want to know about it, let me just give you a quick walkthrough of it. All right, so there's two little nozzle things here, and that's where you pump them up with the air pump. So if one gets punctured, at least you got one. It's got the seat, all foam seat. You sit really high, only your, below your knees are in the water. Comes with this little thing too. You can measure your catch on the top of it up to 18 inches. You know, it was hard going down the rocks, so I, I just threw this thing down the rocks. Probably not the smartest idea, but it's got this really strong material on the outside too, and two back straps there. But yeah, good stuff. All right, now let's cook the fish. Let's see what he measures. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. A little over 24 inches. Beautiful lingcod, look at that thing. What a beautiful fish right here. 24 inch lingcod. Gonna do two fillets, take the skin off. Make our first cut right below the fin there. Now it's gonna follow that spine. You know how we do it. All the way down to the tail. Oh man, this is there's so much meat here. I think one fillet is gonna be enough for me and Daniel. I'll probably probably bring the rest home to eat myself later. I really don't mind taking my time rather than just cutting through the whole thing like that. If I want to get as much meat as possible, I'll take my time, go right over the rib cage or go over the um, the spine there. All right, let's see if I can cut through these pin bones now. Just through the pin bones, keeping the rib cage attached. Got about all of that meat right there. Look at that fillet, jeez. And there's that beautiful fillet right there. Look at all that meat. That is a, not any meat wasted on that thing. And there's no rib cage. I kept the rib bones on here. You can see the rib bones are right here. So the only thing that's left here are these pin bones. The pin bones run along here. I can just do a straight cut on both sides. And then I'm gonna skin it too. Man, that's nice. Let me uh, fillet the other side first. I've got all that belly meat too. Let's see if we can get anything out of the cheeks. Cheeks usually have some meat in them. People kind of compare them to scallops. Maybe probably because of the shape. All right, now I'm gonna take the skin off those fillets. Should be very simple. You just do a little tiny cut here on the meat and that gives you something to hold. And then you just go the opposite way on the skin. And get close, you know. Just keep the, keep the blade pretty much parallel to the piece of wood that you, you're using. Yep, so you just keep your knife flat. And if your knife's not long enough, just do it halfway first and then just do the other half on the next pull. Once you do that, there's your skin and there's your filet. All right, so all the pin bones are right in these two pieces. And this is a boneless filet right there. Now let's rinse it off and cook it up. All right, so we're only gonna eat one of these filets. Just gonna put a little salt, pepper, garlic powder on this one and I'll cut it up. But while I do that and while I prepare the meal, Daniel just had a fish. Tell him what happened when, when, while I do this, hold on. So I caught a baby kelp greenling that was on the line and I didn't even know. Um, and I felt little bites, a little tug here and there, but nothing big. And so I was gonna reel the line back in and recast and it was super heavy. It was really heavy, so I thought I got snagged on some seaweed. As I was reeling it in, I see something blue or green trailing the kelp greenling. And guess what it was? It was a lingcod. It was a bright blue lingcod that was uh, essentially piggybacking on the kelp greenling. So it wasn't hooked. It was just biting onto the kelp greenling as I'm bringing, it in, uh, bringing the line in. And it's getting closer and closer to shore. I have no idea what to do. How do I land this guy? How do I and land this guy? And I'm kind of panicking. I'm like, oh man, 
what am I going to do? What should I do? So I decide to step down uh, a bit and try to grab the line and swing the fish up. I brought the fish close enough to shore where it got out of the water, but once it got out of the water, Lincot let go. But it was at my feet. And literally, I tried to use my fingers and, and grab its gills to get a good hold of the fish. Um, but I missed. I missed. No! No! I missed, and the lingcod turned around. So calm. Just turned around. It was chill. And then I tried to grab his tail. It didn't, it didn't twitch or anything. It just calmly just swam off. Just swam off, kind of like it was, it was teasing me. Like, hey man, you're not gonna get me, it's cool. So that's what happened. And he has all the footage too. So if, you want, if he makes a video, it'll be on his channel, Philosophy D. But if he doesn't make a video, then he'll give me the footage and I'll put it in this one. I was like, I got some of this salsa here, just in this can. I was kind of lazy, I didn't want to bring the actual onions and tomatoes. So I popped the top. Fire roasted salsa, tastes pretty good. And of course, next main ingredient after butter is avocados. We got the fish going, it's almost done. Oh yeah, oh man, it's got a nice brown to it right now. It's just about done. You know, I don't think I ever had ling cod this fresh before. Look how easily that breaks off. This is Daniel's meal right here. It's not overcooked, right? It's not overcooked at all. No bones. So I got those pin bones, no bones. Filleted oh. over the ribs. I love how the outside is like crispy. My favorite part. And then inside is flaky. That was pretty fun out there on the float tube. Dude, I felt hella stable too. Like it wasn't rocking at all. It was like a catamaran with both those inflatable things. Look and look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> float tube fishing, Pacific Ocean edition. Crazy. Well, show. All done. Now I'm ready to eat. Yeah, link is good. That was flaky and soft. Honestly, to me though, fish is kind of like fish. Like, oh yeah. There's not the like texture is very similar. To all of them. Yeah, it's not like I, I don't feel like there's a huge difference between like a black rockfish or a grassy or a lingcod. Yeah, probably not. Like, that, in my opinion. If this was prepared the exact same way, and then you gave me a black rockfish that was prepared the exact same way, I think I could. I know which one the, the lingcod was. Really? We can do a taste test next time. Yeah, we should. I don't think I would be able to tell the difference. Look at that. It's like a jumble of everything. Little salsa, little avocado, and a bunch of lingcod. That's only half of it too. Uh, oh no, oh no, I dropped some. Let's not waste any. All right, dude, I'm ready to go fish again. Help. <laughs> <laughs>